the question is how much a cloud engineer should know about cyber security the short answer is a fair bit and the long answer is that every it professional in and outside of cloud must know about cyber security to some extent not only professional in the cloud but these days every technology user should at least have the basic understanding of what cybersecurity is and what their role is. That is why the cybersecurity is becoming more and more part and parcel of cloud engineers job everywhere on the globe. Security of the cloud is responsibility of cloud provider, whereas security in the cloud is onus of cloud engineer. A cloud engineer should always start by following secure design patterns and principles for your cloud setup and cloud operations and they should always read the documentation provided by their cloud provider about the cyber security cyber security has become an integral pillar of every cloud provider and every cloud provider has a guideline and best practices around it now for a cloud engineer there are two broad spectrums where they should focus their energies on when it comes to cybersecurity. One is cloud infrastructure security and the other one is cloud application security. And the purpose of this video is to make you aware of what a cloud engineer should learn to become more cybersecurity aware and be able to perform their job properly when it comes to cybersecurity. Now let's focus on cloud infrastructure security first when it comes to cloud infrastructure security there are various concepts which a cloud engineer should be aware of and i'm not saying that they should be an expert in it but they should be aware of it and they should be able to facilitate that and then there are some areas in the cloud where they need to do some tasks inevitably the first one is cloud security posture management or cspm Cloud security posture management is, um, is sort of a segment of an IT security tooling, which is primarily designed to identify misconfiguration issues in the cloud and also the compliance risks. Then comes the antivirus. There are various virtual machines like EC2 in the AWS environment, which run in the cloud and there are thousands and thousands of them. Just because they're in the cloud doesn't mean, and behind some firewall or any in secure networking doesn't mean that we don't need an antivirus. A cloud and aware antivirus, a modern antivirus is a must on those VMs. And it is a job of the cloud engineer to make sure that every VM running in their cloud has an antivirus and updated one and updates are happening frequently. Moreover, cloud engineer must ensure an automated way uh, to make sure that every VM which gets spun up in the cloud has an antivirus. Now, for that purpose, the best practice is to, for example, in case of AWS, they should create an AMI or Amazon machine image, which already contains an antivirus and the updated one and during the life of that vm they should have some sort of configuration management by using let's say aws system or the ansible uh, to make sure that antivirus gets updated frequently second uh, sorry third thing in this frame is cloud uh, workload discovery what cloud workload discovery means is that it provides complete visibility into workload and container events and instance metadata, enabling faster and more accurate detection, response, threat hunting, and investigation. And it enables us to ensure that nothing goes unseen in our cloud environment. And this could mean uh, that whatever is running on your VMs or containers in Kubernetes or whatever there is even the serverless code and there are various tools available in the market you just need to search with cloud work to discovery and there are a lot of them i'm not going to mention any specific tool here because um, there are various available with their merits and demerits then comes the iam identity access management and sso support 
So it is all about authentication and authorization. And there are various ways, um, some of federated um, law authentication methods, and then for the authorization, we have various layers to various services, and this is all integrated. And it should all follow the zero trust and shift left security principles. And cloud engineer must make sure that they are following the best practices in terms of IAM. For example, just to give you an example uh, about the IAM keys in AWS. So it is a common practice that these IAM keys uh, doesn't get rotated. So you should have visibility into that and you must make sure that these keys are being rotated frequently so that there is no loophole and vulnerability there. Then comes secure cloud networking. Now, generically, what it means is that in the cloud, we have this concept of virtual cloud or virtual um, cloud networking or virtual private cloud, same thing. And then in that virtual cloud, you have different subnetting, you have routing, you have firewalls, knuckles, and various other things. So a cloud engineer must make sure that they are aware of how the networking is configured and um, what access is there, who has access there, how the traffic is flowing, what are the patterns of ingress and egress, and so on and so forth. Then comes a monitoring. Every serious cloud must have some eyes on the glass tool to monitor what's happening in the cloud. And that tool should provide a sort of an eye on all the logs from various sources such as your Active Directory, your antivirus logs, your trail logs. Um, by trail, I mean such as in AWS, you have CloudTrail, which records all the API calls. You should have um, the record of who's making what API call when. And if there is an untoward uh, incident, that tool should alert you uh, or your SOC team. And then you have various other networking related logs, which should be part of that tooling. And this uh, tooling could be proactive or reactive depending on the maturity level of your organization. Then comes a disaster recovery. In this um, age where ransomware is rampant across the globe, and I'm in Australia and this is a big deal these days, a um, lot of companies here have been the victim of this ransomware. They have lost data, they have lost their reputation, um, and there's a lot of chaos around it. So one thing which cannot be stressed enough in terms of cloud engineers job is to make sure they have a battle tested disaster recovery policy so that in case of any security incident, they should be able to not only um, reduce the blast surface of that security incident, but they should also be able to make sure that they recover from it. So this is um, some of the, these are some of the things which a cloud engineer must know around cloud infrastructure security. Then comes cloud application security. Now, this is more of a support role of cloud engineer. Um, and this support role is to provide the support to cybersecurity team, your cloud architects, developers of your organization and third parties. Now, um, you would definitely be required to conf install, configure and manage some of the application security tools, but you're not really supposed to go in depth in those, unlike your cloud infrastructure security tools. For example, the previously the tools, cloud infrastructure security tool, you were required to uh, um, automate the installation and then updates of antivirus but you're not really required to manage these application security tools once they are deployed. These are the jobs of different stakeholders in your organizations, but you definitely are supposed to know what exactly is out there, what it means, what it does, and which tool does what job, and you need to install them and provide relevant support to your stakeholders. Now, um, there are some um, email security tools which you need to take care of. Then you have SCAR tools. SCAR stands for Software Composition Analysis. Software um, Composition Analysis or SCAR tool checks any open source libraries in your code. 
or in uh, whatever code is running in your organization, then you need to be aware of SAS tools or static application security testing tools. These tools are used to analyze and find vulnerabilities in your code. So SCA, the difference between SCA and SAS is that SCA is used to analyze third-party code or third-party external libraries, and SAS is for your own code. So for example, uh, in your organization, you your developers are writing Python code. So the code, when they write the Python code, they import some modules. Those modules are checked for vulnerabilities by SCAR tools, but the code written by your own developer is checked by the SAS tools. Then we have DAST tools, which is dynamic application security uh, testing tools, and they are more towards a runtime application analysis. When the application is running, they don't check the source code. Then we have um, something called a spend testing, which is which happens almost in every organization. So the role of cloud engineer is to facilitate and support the developers or any third part third party testers. Um, to make sure they're able to do the pen testing. This could also involve working hand in hand with your DevOps team and to integrate these testings or tests in the CI or continuous integration part of your pipeline, DevOps pipeline. Then um, we then a cloud engineer need to support the cybersecurity team when it comes to EASM tool. The EASM tool is an external attack surface management tool and we have various in the market and then um, they also cloud engineer also should provide support for any threat modeling uh, threat model modeling is a huge and big field um, basically just to give you a quick example uh, the cyber security team picks up an application and then they try to foresee how an attacker could exploit the system, what are the weak points of this application or the whole architecture around it, uh, if it is using a database and if that database is in the restricted network or is it exposed to public, how the developer are accessing application, are you using any federated um, login, are they going through Okta or through any AWS service like Cognito and then so on and so forth. So a cloud engineer should work with cybersecurity team, developers and identity team to make sure that everything is in place and then um, where exactly that application lies in the cloud. Cloud engineer's role is also to um, make sure they provide support to uh, their cybersecurity or whatever rele relevant team is there for any data loss prevention or DLP tool. Same goes for support for web proxy. Now this, could be a wholesome job for cloud engineer, the web proxy one, if they are using any AWS firewall or if they are using any third party tool. So if in case of third party tool, they would need to integrate it with their DNS services, such as Route 53 in the cloud, or they could just use, uh, they could simply use their cloud front distribution, the CDN with the um, AWS firewall. So there could be different patterns here and depending upon what exactly is being used in your application, the cloud engineer role could vary when it comes to the web proxy. Uh, for example, one use case I have seen in the older cloud environment is that um, people are using open source squid proxy installed on um, VMs and then all the servers in the cloud which are in the private subnets without any direct connectivity to, to internet for any egress traffic they point to that that uh, squid proxy now the squid proxy acts as a egress um, proxy or the sort of uh, forward proxy or pass through proxy in that case and then that has to that management of that script proxy is the role of cloud engineer plus the role out of that proxy settings in the baking of AMI through any Jenkins pipeline. So that is uh, a different pattern there. And then we have um, secure cloud integrations. Every application which runs in the cloud needs to be integrated with various services. For example, if you are using any um, serverless functions in your cloud, you have to have that uh, serverless function within the virtual cloud and that virtual cloud needs to talk to various other services like data store, 
to your identity, your, your authorization, any other integration. So a cloud engineer must make sure that first the integration is there, access is sorted, access is only on the basis of least privileged, and then that um, that service is secure enough, plus all the traffic which is flowing across that integration is fully trailed and audited. So this is pretty much the cloud application security is. So cybersecurity is one part of cloud engineer's job, and that is why it is an overarching role, which includes so many things. From cybersecurity perspective, the responsibility of a cloud engineer is to identify and remediate risk through security assessments, and also to make sure to have some automated compliance uh, monitoring. Plus, cloud engineer's role is to provide support to other stakeholders in the organization. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, any feedback, please feel free to put it in the comments. Thank you very much.